Hello everyone and welcome back to the Game Chef with me Mark. Today's video is a very special video that I've been meaning to do for ages. It is installing Project Eris on a USB stick in order to mod your PlayStation Classic. Now Project Eris has been out for a while now but it is the spiritual successor to BleemSync. You remember I did all those BleemSync videos previously, how to add new games, how to do everything on your PlayStation Classic. Anyway. A big gap between me doing BleemSync videos and now me starting to do Project Eris videos. But now I'm back doing these videos again. So Project Eris is up to version 0.9.5. It has loads of cool features, loads of new stuff that is better than what BleemSync was previously. There's a lot of improvements basically. Uh, coming down the line in version 1 is the desktop app. The desktop app will allow you to drag and drop games uh, in a very, very simple and easy manner, like we used to with the Super Nintendo uh, Mini modification. Remember those from a while back? Uh, yeah, so this that's coming down the road, but for now, this is how you install Project Eris on your clean PlayStation Classic. With no other mods on it, we're literally gonna start from scratch. So I've wiped my PlayStation Classic down. Look at this. Let's click over onto that. Look at that, brand new clean here's my playstation classic all lovely and clean um i've wiped it all down for you guys i've wiped a usb stick and i'm ready to go so for this video at a minimum you need a usb 2 usb stick very very simple i have a 32 gig cruiser blade here i will put the link in the description below uh to where you can buy that these seem to work really well for me. So for the initial modification, you need a USB 2 stick to go into port 2 on the PlayStation Classic. So if you're watching this video and you haven't even got a USB 2 stick, then you're going to be in trouble watching the rest of the video. You may as well go and buy one now and then come back and watch this video. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself over to modmyclassic.com forward slash project Eris and take a look at the web page that they've put up here. There's so much information on here, it's really, really easy to follow, and they give you all the information about what's available with Project Eris as well. If you want to follow along with a text-based guide, then there is a guide on here. If you click on how to install Project Eris on a system with stock kernel. Now that's a clean system, it's got no mods on it. Right, so let's get right into this. This is how you install Project Eris. Download the zip package to your computer. Let's click on that, and it will take us to where we can download the full package we click on that right there where it says download full package it will download the file the zip file is 398 meg so if you've got slow internet then bear with this download so while i'm waiting for that to finish i'm going to plug in my usb stick so we can get that formatted and ready so what you need to do is find your usb stick right click on it and go to format make sure it's on fat32 just restore the device defaults and change the volume label to Sony. Click on start, click on okay. So that should format. And once it's ready, you have your blank USB stick labeled as Sony. Go ahead and open the zip file that we just downloaded. And here we go. Lay them side by side, it makes it a lot easier. And all you have to do is copy the files that are here, drag them into here, and let them copy across. Now this will take a bit of time because we're only using USB 2, it is quite slow. So that's it, all the files are copied across, our USB is ready, we can unplug it from our PC and we can plug it into our PlayStation Classic. So at this stage, make sure your PlayStation Classic is disconnected from everything else. Make sure the HDMI is disconnected, the power is disconnected, it's just the PlayStation Classic. Put the USB into port two and make sure you've got a controller plugged into port one. Plug the HDMI back in, and then plug the power back in as well. Switch on over to the PlayStation Classic screen and turn on the PlayStation Classic. Wait just a sec, you'll see the light change. And we end up with this screen that says creating file system backup. This does take a couple of minutes, so bear with it guys. Next we see it says creating recovery partition backup then creating kernel backup and then it goes through a few different things including installing usb host and installing payload this is all normal and then we get that lovely noise to tell us that the hack is now complete the console will restart 
And what you'll probably find, guys, is that the console doesn't actually restart, it just shuts down. So once that's powered down, all you have to then do is take the USB stick out of the PlayStation Classic and pop it back into your PC. Now the reason we are doing this at this point is to format the USB so that it's recognized by the PlayStation Classic. So all you need to do at this stage is create yourself a folder on your desktop that you can back up the files to from that USB. So if you highlight them all, cut and paste, it will chuck them all back onto the desktop. Okay, so once the files are copied back onto your computer, the USB drive will look like this. It is completely empty and still labeled as Sony. What I need you to do now is right click and go format. Change this to XFAT, E-X-F-A-T. Leave it labeled as Sony and then click start. Click OK and the format will complete. Open the drive back up like this and what you need to do before you copy the files across is create a copy of this backup folder. This is really, really important guys. I must, I cannot stress how important this is. So the best way I've found of doing this is to copy this folder here. So in the root of that original folder. Now, when you cut all these other folders here you're not you're not touching that backup folder the backup folder is still in there but you've got your copy of the backup folder all nice and snugly safe in there right click onto the drive and paste all the folders back onto the USB drive okay so once all the files are copied back onto your USB stick that is in XFAT format what we need to do is take it out of our PC and put it back into the PlayStation Classic. Now remember guys, we've been using the USB 2 stick the whole way through this video. What I'm gonna show you in another video is how to use a USB 3 stick and an OTG adapter in order to make this process a lot quicker for the future, for you adding games and the rest of it. That's the bit that takes time. So I will show you that and I'm sure you're gonna love it. So as you can hear in the background, we do have Project Eris up and running on our PlayStation Classic, and this is the splash screen. This is the main screen, the boot menu. So first and foremost, Project Eris right here. Then we've got RetroArch, and we've also now got Emulation Station. For those of you that don't know what Emulation Station is, it's a fully fledged uh, front end for all your gaming. So this could be playing Super Nintendo games. This could be playing Mega Drive games. Uh, Genesis games all the rest of it. It's all within emulation station Now for the time being I'm just going to show you the settings that you can mess about with here This will give you an idea of what you can change within the boot up sequence and all the rest of it So let's press L1 to look at the settings and we scroll down So we've got enable logging clear logs on boot for system redump So don't worry about any of this stuff Linking internal and USB games is really really useful because it will put them all in the carousel instead of just showing the USB games and not the internal games. Uh, display games in alphabetical order. Launch games in RetroArch from stock UI. This one's really good actually, and I would recommend turning this one on uh, because it uses the RetroArch emulator to launch your PlayStation Classic games from the stock carousel. Scrolling down, we've got the generate RetroArch playlist from internal games, that's good to have. Uh, USB games, network support. Guys, this is if you wanna use Wi-Fi with your PlayStation Classic. You can enable this if you'd like. It is very, very useful, but I will cover that off in another video. Bluetooth support, again, something else so that you can use wireless controllers, but you have to have a Bluetooth dongle in order to do that. Display RetroArch loading screen, display Project Eris splash screen, interrupt Sony boot animation, disable health warning, always turn this on, get rid of that, we don't wanna see it. Um, disable app launchers in carousel, no, we wanna see all of that. And then we get down to themes. Um, there is just a couple of themes on here at the moment. You can download themes and add to this list, but you've got the Mod My Classic and you've got the stock theme. So I'm going to leave it on Mod My Classic. You can load your own custom theme music. You can do loading random theme. Boot menu music. You can turn that off if you want, if this is annoying, um, and so on. Enable write access to GA data. I don't think you need any of that. So what I've shown you here to turn on or off it's going to get you going. So press start and it will say reset. And we're back to Project Eris. And as you see here, we've got no, no loading screen music. Um, if I click into Project Eris 
it will load into the main carousel this is what we've seen before but you'll notice a whole load of new stuff here look you've got the retro arch shortcut game manager folder manager and the link back to the boot menu this is useful this means you can go back and um, go back to that boot menu so you can get to RetroArch and also emulation station very very easily so at this stage now you know that's working power down the PlayStation Classic take the USB stick out and put it back into your PC what we're gonna do now is load a couple of games on so that you can check out those extra features and play some PlayStation games uh, that aren't already in the stock carousel so transferring games has been massively simplified in this version of Project Eris. It's so easy. You go to the transfer folder that's on your USB and you copy in simply the bin and queue files for the game you want to upload. So I've copied three games across. I've copied across Metal Slug X, Doom and Die Hard Trilogy. You can see all the files in there. Once you've done that, take the USB out of your PC, put it back into your PlayStation Classic and power it on. Okay. So let's head on into Project Eris and we should see those new games in here. There you go, look, Die Hard Trilogy, Doom, and where's Metal Slug X? There it is. So we've got a few new games just on our carousel here. Um, what I want to show you now is how to organize those games uh, into folders. So let's click on Folder Menu. And as you can see here, we've got no folders at this point. So if we press square, as you can see along the bottom, there's all the uh, instructions of what to do. Press square, you can now create a folder. So I'm just going to create a folder called Extra Games. Let's confirm that, right? We've got some extra games here. You can choose a folder. So literally you go up and you click on the folder here, and then you can choose another folder if you want. Completely up to you what you choose um, at the moment. It was set to just the PlayStation um, logo as standard, but there's a whole load here. So if you want to put all your Crash Bandicoot games together, uh, all your driver games together, Final Fantasy games together, etc., etc., you can do that. And you can also add new folder images to your drive so that you can choose other ones. But what you're seeing here is what comes as standard. So I'm just going to choose the uh, the basic. Let's have a look. The basic PlayStation. Oh, I'm going for the old school logo. Go for that basic PlayStation folder, and now all you have to do is add the game. So click on Games with X, and look, it will give you your list of games. So far, I've obviously only added three. If you had 23 here, then obviously you could sort through them. So I'm going to click on each one of these. So you press X to choose it, and then you press Start to confirm. Press Start again, and look at that. We have a folder, and now we want to add another folder. So we press Square again, and what we're going to do is we're going to change the name to stock games press start and choose a folder picture I'm just gonna put it as um, the standard PlayStation logo like that I quite like the the disc covers in there that's quite nice uh, so go to add remove games and what you do now to look at the internal games is you press triangle and it will show you all the internal games and you can do the same thing again if you wanted to create folders for sports games or you wanted to create folders for whatever type of games you can do it from here so all I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to show you how to split uh, internal games and the extra games press L1 to select all the games and then press start to confirm so what we should end up with once I press start is we've got two folders we've got stock games and we've got extra games so all we want to do at this stage is press circle to go back and you say yes I want to quit without selecting a folder and it will take you back to the stock carousel and what you'll have is you'll have these extra folders for the things that you wanted so I've got mine set as extra games and stock games if I just want to see the games that I've added clicking this will list that will list those games for me so look die hard doom metal slug completely up to you how you organize this guys there's lots of different ways you could do it you could just not have folders if you don't want to have folders and um, that's completely up to you the final thing I want to show you in this video is the game manager the game manager is super useful if you want to change any aspects of each individual game that you've added so if I look here I've got Die Hard Trilogy Doom and Metal Slug so the covers have been done automatically by Project Eris uh, the names, the dates, everything has all been done automatically. But if you find that something is not quite right or you want to rename it slightly, you can do that yourself. So let's go here and change Doom to Doom with an exclamation mark. Just so you can see what it looks like. Press confirm and look, suddenly we've got Doom with an exclamation mark. What I want you to see at this point is that you can change each of these things. The publisher, the year, 
and the game title. So if I go back, you can also delete the games from here. So if, for example, you've doubled up on games, you've added the same game twice, you can actually delete it from here, which is really useful. So now we press circle to go back again. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes. And we go back here and look at Doom. It's now got an exclamation mark. Amazing. <laughs> so you get the idea. That's what the game manager's for. That's what the folder manager's for. So that's it for Project Eris. The only other things on here now are Emulation Station and RetroArch. I'm not going to cover that in this video today, guys, because I just wanted to show you how to get Project Eris up and running. But I will do some separate videos to show you all the other bits and pieces that are possible with Project Eris. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see these types of videos in future and you want to get them as soon as they come out. I will be doing a video as soon as version one of Project Eris comes out with the desktop manager. Really important, guys. That's a big update. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel for that update. Um, I will be doing tons more PlayStation Classic, uh, Mega Drive Mini, uh, Super Nintendo Classic. I mean, I've got to go back to that, haven't I, really? Because it's been such a long time since I covered anything around that. I want to go back and have a look and see what that looks like in 2020. Please drop a like on this video. It really helps me out. And finally, enjoy playing your PlayStation Classic games. Thank you, guys. I will see you next time.